This video will show how to find some of the more common when variable statistics using Desmos. In the box below, we have all the features that are available from the statistical menu in Desmos. We will find the highlighted stats, where first the total will give the sum of the elements, length will give the number of elements, mean will give the mean or average, median gives the median, min gives the minimum or least data value, max gives the maximum or greatest data value, the quartile function gives the first and third quartiles, stdev gives the sample standard deviation, and stdevp gives the population standard deviation. One common statistic Desmos doesn't give is the range. We need to remember that the range is the max minus the min. Looking at these notes, notice how we put the list of the data in parentheses after the function. However, for finding several of these values, it's easier to put the data in a list assigned to a variable, and then we can use the variable instead of listing out the data each time. To get started, let's go to desmos.com and click Start Graphing. And we'll begin by entering the data as a list. To do this, we select a variable and then set it equal to the list in square brackets. I'm going to go ahead and use the variable capital L. So shift L equals, and then we select the square brackets. Enter the data separated by commas. Press enter, and now we have all the data in the list capital L. If there were multiple lists, we could use subscripts for the list. Notice how it also tells us the list contains 19 elements or 19 data values. And now let's go ahead and answer these questions using the appropriate Desmos function. So the first one is the number of data values. We can use the function length to do this. However, because we store the data in a list, we already know there are 19 elements. But just to show this, we can type in length from the keyboard or use the Desmos keyboard by clicking the Open Keyboard button in the lower left-hand corner. And all the functions can be found under Functions on the right and then stats. And notice here we have the length function. So if we click length, instead of entering all the data again, we can now just type capital L and notice how the length or number of data value shows below as 19. Next we want to find the sum of the data values. To do this we use the total function. So I'm going to go ahead and click in the third cell. Again if we want we can type in total from the keyboard, capital L in parentheses, and it will give us the sum of all the data, or we can go to functions, stats, total, shift L, and it also gives us the total. Let's go ahead and record these. Again, we know there are 19 data values, and the sum of all the data values was 1,556. Next, we're asked to find the mean and the median and the functions are mean and median. So again, we can either type them in from the keyboard or go back to functions. Let's go ahead and select the mean, enter capital L, and the mean shows below. Click in cell five, let's find the median. Functions, median, capital L, enter, and we have the median of 82. So let's round the mean to let's say two decimal places we will say the mean is approximately 81.89 and the median is 82. Next we will go ahead and find the min and max, but notice since the data is in order, we already know the minimum is 65 and the maximum is 98, but we'll go ahead and just show this on Desmos anyway. And this time I'll just go ahead and type these in from the keyboard, min, capital L in parentheses, the minimum is 65, Go down to cell seven, max, capital L in parentheses, the maximum is 98. Now we want to find the first quartile and the third quartile using the quartile function. I'm going to go ahead and open up the keyboard, click in cell eight, go to functions. Now be careful here, we want quartile, not quantile. So we'll click on quartile, 
Next, we enter capital L for the set of data, comma. For the first quartile, we enter one. For the third quartile, we enter three. So we'll enter one. First quartile is 74. Click in cell nine. I'll go and just type in quartile. Open parenthesis L comma three. And notice how the third quartile is 91. Let's go ahead and record these as well. It is important to recognize that there are several methods for determining the quartiles. We'll discuss the method Desmos uses in just a moment. Let's first find the sample standard deviation as well as the population standard deviation. And then we'll also find the range. So going back to the calculator, let's first find the sample standard deviation. So we'll go ahead and click functions. Looking at the stats functions, we want stdev, not stdevp, for the sample standard deviation. So we click stdev, capital L, and we have the sample standard deviation. In cell 11, we will find the population standard deviation. Functions, and now we select stdevp, capital L, and now we have the population standard deviation. The two decimal places, the sample standard deviation is approximately 9.36 and the population standard deviation is approximately 9.11. And again, there is no function for the range. We need to remember the range is the max minus the min. And since 98 minus 65 is equal to 33, we know the range is 33. But now again, before we go, let's talk about the quartiles again, because depending on the method you're asked to use to find the quartiles, you can get different results. So again, it is important to be aware that there is not one standard method for determining the first and third quartiles. Desmos, as well as the TID4, uses the method such that when there is an odd number of data values, the median is not included in the upper and lower half of the data when determining Q1 and Q3. This is sometimes referred to as the exclusive method which means a median is not included in the upper and lower half when we have an odd number of data values. And here we have an example of where we have an odd number of data values and an even number of data values. Again, notice how when there's an odd number of data values, notice three is the median, we do not include three in the lower half when we determine quartile one, and therefore quartile one is the mean of one and two. Similarly, quartile three is the mean of four and five. Again, because we do not include the median in the upper and lower half to determine Q1 and Q3. I hope you found this helpful.